remember that today is Worldwide Communion Sunday. So all over the world, people, Christians, all will be celebrating the sacrament together and yet so far apart. But we're here together today. So let us share a sign of peace with each other and love with each other as we begin our worship. Let us begin with the lighting of our candle and the ringing of the bell, Lynn and Debbie. Please help us along. Good job. Lynn. Thank you, ladies. Friends, what is our church's mission? To embody God's powerful love, welcoming all people with a vision and a message of hope. We need deep relationships with Jesus and each other, working, praising, and playing in our towns and world. Let us call one another to worship. Creator of community, Generous and inclusive friend. We rejoice in our friendship here. Lover of laughter and song. We offer these to you. Giver of our daily bread. We thank you for all that nourishes us. God, our constant companion, be present in our sharing as we worship you this day. Amen. Amen. And now I call on Mary Ann to lead us in our invocation. Good morning. Responsorial reading, Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded the war because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What are humans that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Gospel reading, Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. People were bringing children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is... It is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks. Friends, please be seated. And before I begin my sermon this morning, let us pray together. O oh God of love, O oh God of truth, let us say strong things gently 
and gentle things strongly. Let us speak the truth in love to all and love the truth that lives in each. Let us hear the truth as we each need it and live that truth. O oh God, we heed it through Jesus, our brother and our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, I've been away for two weeks and I traveled all the way to Scotland with a couple of other retired ministers and one other friend and it was an experience of a lifetime. So I thought I'd base my sermon on one of the days of my experience. So our scripture lesson this morning is short, just three verses from the Gospel of Mark, but it certainly packs a good punch, or as I have heard the Scots say, for just about every good idea or thought, brilliant, brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> the lesson, let the children come to me. Do not stop them, because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. On this Worldwide Communion Sunday, let us pause for a moment and just let that sink in. Let the children come to me. Around the world on this very special Sunday in the Christian faith, people all around are thinking of others, celebrating the sacrament of Holy Com Communion. Our commonality, the most wonderful gift of all, the gift from our Savior, his body and blood, the bread and wine, the magnificent feast for all the children of God. Let the children come to me. Those five simple words. As we celebrate, let us remember that all, all of us on this planet are children of God. Now I'd like to share a story, my story, about a day on my trip to Scotland. Yes, just one of the days, but one that opened my eyes and opened my heart and made me feel like a child again. And hopefully, each one of us can find our inner child. In real time, whether it's today or it could be tomorrow, or maybe it will happen to you next week, but each of us might once again feel like a child, ready to soak up a lesson, because that's what children do. So sit back and remember what it was like being a child, and maybe, just maybe, my story will help you to realize just what it means to be a child of God. As I drove into the village of Kincraig, I felt my heart sort of flutter. And I thought, Jane, you have no Scottish heritage. Why are you getting this feeling? And I must say, since I'm home, I did some investigating and learned about Kin Craig. Kin, meaning relative of, such as kinfolk, relation, family. And then Craig, derived from the Scottish Gaelic word meaning Craig, meaning rock, as in Peter. And I thought, whoa, now I know I got the flutter. So as soon as I dro drove, I knew that the flutter, for now I am kinfolk of the rock of Peter. When Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church, it's my beginning feeling of being a child of God. Immediately, I thought of the story I wanted to tell about faith from Psalm 139. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. 
My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book. Before one of them came to be, how precious to me are your thoughts. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. And when I'm awake, I am always with you. The psalmist knew what he was writing about. And as I approached our destination, I heard the others in the car gasp along with me. And it wasn't because I was on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> there, right at the opening gate of this pasture, was a tall man with blondish sort of graying hair, blowing in the wind, holding a shepherd's hook, waving to our car to park right in front of him. No exaggeration, my friends. As we exited the car, he called to us, and as he did, there right around him was the most beautiful rainbow I had ever seen. Distinct colors surrounded him, and I knew, I just knew this was going to be an experience of a lifetime. As I took it all in, I noticed there was about a dozen or so sheepdogs circled about him. Next, I noticed in the distance, across the craggy, hilly pasture, were about a hundred sheep. Across, in front of the man, as we stood, the dozen of us, staring at the sight, I couldn't help myself. I was as giddy as a child. And then, as I turned, I heard the sound of lambs behind me, bleeding away as if calling to their mothers, waiting to be fed. The man began to talk and explain that he was the only shepherd on the property and that today we were there to learn how sheepdogs work. He explained we had to watch our steps because in addition to the dozen dogs that were there and going to help him do his work were a half a dozen or so puppies also there to learn like ourselves. They were seven weeks old and they were adorable. And like us, they were ready to soak up their lesson too. I realized then I am a child of God. I am one of the sheep. Maybe I'm just a lamb like the little ones behind me. But an important part of the flock I was standing with. The shepherd explained in detail his job. Watch over the flock. He works on an estate that owns a hundred thousand acres. He said, I know when my sheep are missing. I know when my neighbor's sheep are with my flock. I know my sheep and they know me. Neil stated proudly, I am in charge of a flock of 3,500 sheep and I know where they are. As I stood, the dogs performed all sorts of work. And as I watched, giddy with excitement, I knew I was almost childlike. But then so were the others around me. There seemed to be a glow about us, and I believe the others shared my realization that the shepherd was really giving us a faith-filled lesson. When we stray, the shepherd calls us back. He, as the shepherd, takes the hook of his staff and picks up that stray, almost in a cuddle, reassuring the little one that they were back among their kinfolk, here among the rocky pasture. I thought of Jesus, our good shepherd, that knew us before, that loved us then, that loves us now, that will love us forever. I'd like to finish with a little story, and I brought my little socks with me. Because these are called, I don't know if you can see it, but they're called holy socks. And on this one is the shepherd's crook with one little lamb, and on this is the rest of the flock. And so we wear these socks 
called holy socks. And they're called faith on your feet. Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep, says Luke. So, I see you found the shepherd. Yes, you too? Yes. I got lost and wandered off, but I turned around, and there he was. Tell me about it. What did the shepherd say to you? I couldn't believe that it was the shepherd, so I said, Shepherd, is it really you? I got lost. And he said, Yes, it's really me. And yes, I know you got lost. And we went on talking. I asked a lot of questions. I don't know how it happened. I'm sure I was just eating the grass as usual, and suddenly I was alone. And I couldn't see you, or I couldn't see the flock. Where are the rest of my sheep? I'm really tired, shepherd. Are the flock far away? I don't think I can walk anymore. Hush now, says the shepherd. I'll carry you on my shoulders, and we'll be home soon. Did you really leave the flock and come and get me? I'm just one wee little sheep. I'm not worth a lot. The shepherd said, don't say that. You're worth heaven and earth to me and more. Really? Me? I really mean that much to you? Yes, you do. Thank you, shepherd. You're a really good shepherd. Thank you. It's nice of you to say so. I can see things clearer when you carry me. I expect you can, says the shepherd. It's worth being lost to be so close to you now. I had no idea you loved me so much. Shepherd, did you really leave the rest of the flock for me? How did you know where I was? I didn't even know where I was. So how come I got lost in the first place? Ah, oh, I remember I wasn't paying attention to you or to where I was going or to who I was hanging out with. I didn't really mean to get lost from you. I just couldn't see things clearly. I couldn't see where I was going. I know, said the shepherd. I understand. It's all right now. Shepherd, what's going to happen when we get back to the flock? I won't be able to sit with you on your shoulder. You'll be too busy with the rest of the flock. Well, says the shepherd, you don't have to wander off and get lost to be found again and feel close to me. I am always close to you. Sometimes you feel it, and sometimes you'll feel it as if I'm on the other side of the field. It still helps to take time out so that you can ignore all the other things that are going on around you and just be close to me. Just take a bit of time to draw close and to become aware of your closeness and listen, for I'm always there and you'll feel as close as we are now. Really? Really? Try to remember that, and I will make sure that I take time to be alone with you. As children, we wander, sometimes away from our Lord, our Good Shepherd, but on this day, on this Worldwide Communion Sunday, let us pray for God's children around the world. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper, bring us together like, and let that shepherd take our lead. Bring us all back to the flock, back to our congregations, and back to worshiping our Lord as one family, children of a loving God. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Do not stop them, because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen. Okay, thank you. 
So friends, I invite you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, each and every one, to join in the sacrament. For this, my friends, is the Lord's table. He has invited all those who trust in him to share in this lovely feast, the feast of international bread, so that we know people around the world are sharing as we share this day. He has said, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. Our God is merciful, slow to anger, and bounteous in love. When we repent of sin and return to God, forgiveness is ours. That is God's promise in Christ for each of us. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God Most High. Therefore, with all the communion of saints, we praise. Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe seeks of your glory. God, consecrate this bread and wine that we may feed on things divine, drink from grape and food from flour, Fill them with thy holy power. Thus our Lord may present be, now and for eternity. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth and creates fruit of the tree. We remember that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and after he blessed it, he broke it, saying, This is my body, which has been broken for you. As often as you do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of the bread and drink from the cup, we remember Christ's death, but also the new life in Christ's resurrection. In a similar fashion, Jesus took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of the bread and drink from the cup, we remember Christ. And we remember the new life in his resurrection. Ministering to you this day, the feast is ready, my friends. Come and enjoy. Thank God for inviting us to this table where we may experience Christ and receive his gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. May the Holy one be an ever-present companion and partner, partner as you encounter the tests of life. May your softened heart break over the pains, pangs, and problems of this world. And may the strength of the Spirit fill you, the power of the Spirit embolden you, and the leading Spirit guide you as co-creators of the kingdom of God. Now and forever, go in abundant hope and peace and love. Amen.
Christ shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then be love be found, blessed in his righteousness alone. Oh, blessed to stand before the throne. On Christ's solid rock I stand, full of the ground. 